the second object of the payment library folder can be as widely used as the first we have seen already. Because it's designed for a particular use, it generates a very specific pavement surface. So go to the content browser and load the pavement object. As you said before, Derek generates a particular pavement look because it builds a bone shaped pavement and you can't adjust the dimensions of its elements. So it doesn't have so many options as the first pavement object has. Nevertheless, it generates high detail surface and you still have full control over the rig. It's based on the MoGraph module again. Unfold the pavement object and check its hierarchy. And you can find the pavement rig object here is the key object of the hierarchy because it's the rig itself. However, it contains three other objects as well. So unfold the distortion effector example object. These two effectors plus here demonstrate how effectors can play a deformer rule because they affect the rig. Use it uh, as it is and saw the effector parent object and try to move it. Okay, it works. So saw the rig and go to attributes measure settings and here is the effector's link field. Check its content and you will find the step effector here. So these two effectors of the group are placed here in the link field as well. Uh, it's really the same settings as the first object has. Okay, go back to the rig setup. As, uh, the main size of the pavement can be set here. We can set count values for both directions here. It is both of them to choose that's the lowest value that's possible. And go closer and check the current look of the pavement. It looks it doesn't fit the count that we used. No worries, just continue to the ending group and turn off all triggers here. And it fits well now, because these two values affect full stones only, not bordered half stones. Increase the first value, so increase the count and x direction, use uh, 24 instance, and use the same for the z direction. That's all. So let's say you need to close it at the start of the rig. We need to generate half stones here, so activate the start trigger. Perfect. Use the same for the left side. And here is the right side. And here is the end. Let's say we need to fix a direct position. So it's possible. Just use the Z offset value of the details group here. It shifts a generated pavement in the Z direction. The render instances trigger is the last option of the setup. You activate it here. But be careful, because rendered instance can be affected by a certain Cinema 4D features such as uh, deformers and other objects. We spoke about the effectors field already. It contains all additional effectors we used. And these effectors can play a deformer rule. As we said before, is the rule of the distortion effectors example object as well. Set the null and move the object in x direction again. It affects the pavement and it looks like it's uh, damaged by a heavy track. Let's say we would like to simulate the second rail as well. So copy the object. Select the pavement rig and drag and drop and place new effectors we made to the effectors link field. And select the effectors parent object and move it right. Done. We got a pretty nice result. I will set the pavement and increase the Z uh, count Z value and let's check the current look of the object. It works really well, I think. The rig contains two materials already. The first material is used for the surface itself. It contains all textures you need. We can open the material and check its construction. The Homograph multi shader is the base tone of the setup because it contains many copies of a concrete texture sample that's affected by layer shader settings. Just open any layer shader of the setup and the used texture is, in this particular case, rotated 90 degrees. So the multi shader generates a very random and natural look of the pavement in this way. Okay, uh, the second material of the rake is really important because it's used 
by an internal shader factor that generates even lines offset, so never delete it. The global approach is very similar to the simple setup we have seen already. Once more, don't delete the shader effector itself, and also don't delete any other pavement rig or object, of course. You don't need to open the rig hierarchy, I think. You can change or delete any other object, such as all effectors placed on the same hierarchy level. But, once more, don't touch the rig hierarchy, please. So, don't change the content of the rig. Okay. Uh, let's test the current look of the setup. If we can add an object to our scene. It should be a sphere or other parametric object. I will scale it down and place it uh, somewhere here and adjust it. It's uh, adjust its uh, position vertically, and uh, we can prepare a reflective material. I have to change the mode. GGC should be perfect in, and increase the reflection strain value and. I forgot I will reduce the color brightness a bit. Okay, and add a physical sky into our scene. Or you can use under the illumination setup, it doesn't matter, of course. It's not the issue. And check the current look of the scene. It works really well, I guess. It's really a very nice rig, I think. It's a very powerful setup and it can highly improve the look of your outdoor visualization. So, thank you for watching and let's continue to the next chapter of the series.